When I think of Boeing heavy steel jets, it actually takes me back to being a young child. And just that amazing fascination you'd feel when the actual power of the jet would pull you so hard that you'd stick to the back of your chair. But that was also makes me think that was a different era back then. And it's also nostalgic just to think back to the old days. I mean, you had a smoking section and a non-smoking section within the airplane that was divided by a curtain. <laughs> and also the other thing that I like to remember is the cockpit, occasionally they would leave the door open and you could angle your head down the aisle and just watch the landing and the takeoff right through from your chair in the plane. And this would really help me dream. And I think this is what really started my love for aviation because I could just imagine the feeling of landing or taking off these big jets. Now what's nice is with simulators now, we actually get, the, you can get that immersive feeling and you can actually get that power you feel taking off. Um, now it leads me also to the second thing, which is VR. Now VR is an amazing technology, but I feel for simulators, it kind of, it takes away for something. It kind of, you lose all the tactile, you lose touching the buttons, flicking the switches, looking around and kind of touching an actual control, you know? So what I really like to focus my simulators on tactile buttons. Now, the other thing I don't like is I don't like using the mouse to look around because what I feel what happens is you lose the horizon. And the most important thing as an airplane is you always look back to the horizon and you see that. So what I figured out how to do is I merged a few technologies together. And what this actually let me do is when I use my finger, I can intuitively uh, uh, change to a different view. But then when I, let, when I release, it always goes back to the horizon, the dead horizon. So that really helps me because that kind of helps you keep the spatial understanding of the aircraft. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to do a flight from uh, from Amsterdam to London. And it's kind of, it's towards the evening, so you can really see the colors coming out. Oh, it's beautiful. So jump on board with me. Okay, here we go. Initiate pushback and I'll make a call to the cabin. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, from the flight deck, this is your first officer speaking. We're beginning our taxi and expect to be first in line to take off. Flight attendants, please prepare the camera for departure. So I'm going to use a little reverse thrust to get this thing going. There we go. That's the way to get rolling, a little reverse thrust. Okay, this is a good time to kind of show you my simulator as well at the same time now. So what I have here is I have an iPad in front of me. This is actually the newest generation iPad, but up here, this is actually an old generation iPad. This is number two. Um, you need at least number two to work with uh, SIM Connect. iPad 1, it does run the program you're looking at here, but the iPad 1 is a little rough. Um, I haven't actually actually got into this yet, but I actually even have the FMU here, which is really cool. And uh, I'm kind of looking forward to trying to getting rolling on this in the future. Um, so what I have here is I converted a G27 steering wheel. So this is pretty amazing, actually. This becomes the trim wheel. So let me show you. Uh, you can see I'm turning the trim and turning the steering wheel. So this works really well. And uh, I was actually amazed how well this works. So I'm going to set this to take off so I can push a button and then look down in the cockpit. But it forces my thumb to hold that. Which, with the reason this is important is it because it, it keeps your spatial understanding of the space. So when you're holding it, you're looking down, but then when you release, you're back to the horizon and you're back to eye level. So in all my testing, I really felt this works the best. See, the thing is about VR is you kind of lose all of the switches and you lose the buttons. So I really wanted a simulator that I really can touch things. I mean, look at this. I have radios here. I have switches here. Radios here, autopilot here. I have a throttle here, steering wheel here. Um, I have my throttle here. Up top, I have this. So it really gives you this feeling of a cockpit. If this was VR now, I would feel more in the game, but it kind of wouldn't really give me that cockpit feeling. I've set up some other uh, shortcuts as well. So up, 
kind of looks down to the console at the bottom. You can see even if I turn off the avionics, you can see the avionics are off right now. And then up top I can turn back on my avionics and you can see the bottom comes back online. So that works really well. On my throttle I've hooked up some shortcuts as well so I can look down, I can look up at the top uh, overhead console as well and then I just can look left and right. Um, if you're interested to see how I've set all this up, I'm going to add detailed setup videos to my Patreon page. Go check it out and you can kind of really set this up just like uh, with me and I'll upload all of my configurations uh, as well. Um, my throttle over here, so I'm going to look down and show you. Um, this button here is a toggle on off, so this I can kind of push and then I can look down and kind of leave it off and now I can set up all my engines. Um, I have my uh, spoilers here, which is kind of nice. Um, you can see I can go down and up with the spoilers here. I then have my flaps on the right side. You can see it's going down and up. Because it's kind of hard to see, I just added the flap uh, to show the number I'm at. So I know currently I'm at, at 10 degrees of flaps there. So I'm going to push this down and watch the flaps sliding back up. So obviously you can see it here as well, but it's a little harder to see the exact number. So this way I know when I, when I move my flaps, I see that it's moving, but I can kind of confirm up top that I'm now at two degrees of flaps. So when I slide this down, the reverse thrust goes on in the middle and it kind of pulls me back. So I can actually use that to back up. <laughs> I have an overhead panel toggle switch. And I also have, just looking left out the window, I have a toggle switch as well. So like in the overhead panel, there's all the switches. I've added some switches to my to my iPad here. So it kind of just gives the same feeling. So you can kind of, you know, turn on your landing light, taxi light, um, nav light, all this from here. So I'm going to turn all these off, strobes here. And even the fuel, fuel pump is there as well. So this is actually really, really great. I've also added a shortcut right on my steering wheel so I can actually go one screen, I can go full screen or back to windowed mode and this really helps when you're configuring everything. You just set up a shortcut and you instantly jump it back. We even have the panel light here which is nice. You can turn on the panel light and turn off the panel light. Now you can also see all of the uh, autopilot settings set up here. Um, I do have an autopilot here which I will set up but I haven't done it yet but at one point I'm going to have all the autopilot settings here but I can confirm from here. Obviously it's not the same as turning the actual dials but it's still very close because I'm actually reaching in the same direction down to this autopilot here. Okay so let's get rolling now. Okay, so we're going to Alpha 9. Taxi checklist. Bravo. Set to 5. So I'll go to 5 now. You can see Turn I can... Set for takeoff. Okay, flap set to 5. Taxi checklist completed. Flaps are set to 5. Now the hold short line is here, <laughs> but the game you go a little forward. So just so you know, I'm not breaking the law here. I actually have to go forward for the game to go. But in real life, if you've crossed, if you would cross this line, you would be a bit serious. All right, hold short here, and I'll get our takeoff clearance. Should need full power. World travel 293. Hold it short runway 24. Ready to go. World travel 293. Wind 2. Zero one five, runway two four, clear for takeoff. Fly runway ending. And clear for takeoff, world travel two ninety three. Okay, before takeoff checklist. Engine start switches, set to continuous. Check. Flaps, set to five. Check. And before takeoff checklist complete. Alright, turn on the landing lights and strobes, and let's go. After takeoff, fly runway heading. Landing and lights. To 6, feet. Strobes. We're going to 6,000. We are cleared for takeoff. Here we go. So I'm going to turn off my panel light now, too, just to kind of really get a nice visualization. Okay, 
just gonna turn off my panel light. Oh yeah, now it's really nice and dark, and here we go, we're clear to take off. Full throttle. This is amazing. We're flying into complete whiteout conditions. Just amazing. World travel 293 switching. Thanks. Flaps up and accelerate to 1050 knots. We're going too fast. Reduce thrust to slow us down to 330 knots or less. You can pull the part your world travel 293 is with you climbing to 6000. World travel 293, Russia. World travel 293, Sunland 6225. Left 225, then on course and up to 12,000. World travel 293. Let's run through the after takeoff checklist. Okay, turn left at 225 degrees. Going to left, 225. Climb to 12,000 feet. Landing gear, up. Check. Flaps, up. Yep, yeah, check. Engine start switches, set to off. Check. After takeoff checklist complete. last year. Beautiful just to look down here. Wow. Speed brakes, armed. Auto brakes, full sound free. Landing checklist Hold complete. Up. Full up. Sync rate. Whoa, 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 whoa. This would be a go-around at this point. 